In this session, we're going to be building on what we did in our previous session, where we looked at how to understand scales for mass. And in this lesson, we're going to be reading a range of different scales, which are going to be used both for kilograms and grams, and sometimes mixing them up. And we're also going to be able to find midpoints between intervals. So when we arrow isn't necessarily pointing at one of the numbers or one of the lines but in between them so we can actually work out what that's going to be. So let's begin by opening up our textbook and looking at our first question. So before we jump into those questions I want us just to look at the picture. I want you to think what story do you think this image is telling us? What does it make you think about when you see this? And what do you think the questions could be? So think about those at the moment, just to tell the story. Think about what maths you can see in this image and what potentially the questions should be. And pause the video and come and join me when we can have a look at what questions we're actually going to be working on today. So as we can see from this image, our person is weighing the mass of the carrots and the pumpkin. And for question 1a, we're asking, what is the mass of the carrots? So firstly, let's identify where the carrots are and think about what those scales tell us. Do we need to focus on kilograms or grams to work out the answer? Would we get the same answer if we were to use kilograms and if we were to use grams? For question 1b, we're asking, what is the mass of the pumpkin? And again, think about whether we're using kilograms over grams and think about how we can actually identify exactly what that arrow is pointing to. So now you're ready to pause the video and work on both those questions. So question 1a, what is the mass of the bag of carrots? And question 1b, what is the mass of the pumpkin? So let's begin by looking at question 1a. What is the mass of the bag of carrots? So in order to find out the mass of the carrots, let's think about the strategies that we looked at yesterday. So we're going to be looking at, firstly, the gap between two of these named or labelled intervals. So in this case, we can see we've got 1 kilogram and 200 grams, and the following one is 1 kilogram, 400 grams. And we can see now we've got that scale shown on the horizontal line, that our arrow is pointing to the midpoint, the point in the middle. So if we remember back to our last strategy, well, we're looking at the difference between those two labels. So 1 kilogram and 200 grams, and 1 kilogram and 400 grams, which tells us that the difference is 200 grams. And now what we're going to be looking at is how many intervals do we have between these two numbers. Well, because we know it's about halfway, we put an extra interval in. So 200 grams, and we're going to divide it by 1, 2, 2 intervals. So 200 divided by 2 tells us that it's 100 grams. So now we can count the 1 kilogram and 200 grams in 100 gram intervals to 1 kilogram and 400 grams. So our bag of carrots weighs 1 kilogram and 300 grams. So let's recap on those strategies that we've just used. So number one, we've got to find the interval value. So we can find that by saying that each of these jumps is from one kilogram to 200 grams to one kilogram, 400 grams. Each jump is worth 200 grams. Then we're going to find half the interval value because we know that our arrow is pointing halfway. So half of 200 grams gives us 100 grams. Then we're going to add the amount that we've just got that half interval value of 100 grams onto the previous interval value, in this case 1 kilogram and 200 grams. Add on your 100 to give you 1 kilogram and 300 grams. Let's see whether we can apply this to question 1b, where we are asking what is the mass of the pumpkin? And we can see on this scale we've got a close-up. So we can see that it's between 6 kilograms and 7 kilograms. Now firstly, we have to work out what's the gap between, or the difference between 6 kilograms and 7 kilograms. We can see that that's 1 kilogram. However, we've got 10 intervals in between them. So that means we're going to not be thinking about kilograms, but we're going to be thinking about grams. And we're going to have to remember that knowledge of 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So now I'm looking at having 1,000 grams, 
I'm going to divide it by 10. As you can see on my number line. And when we think 1000 divided by one by 10, we work out how many jumps of 10 we can fit into 1000 and we would have 100. So each of these intervals based on that maths is worth 100 grams. And we can double check that by counting in our 100 grams. So 6 kilograms, 6 kilograms, 100 grams, 6 kilograms, 200 grams, 6 kilograms, 300 grams, and so on. And by labeling all the intervals on this number line, by the time I get to the end, I should have reached 7 kilograms. And once I've labeled those, then I can identify exactly where the arrow is pointing to, which in this case is 6 kilograms and 800 grams. So now we can remember those strategies that we've just looked at. Uh, firstly, identifying the interval value by finding two labeled intervals and the difference between them. Then we can find, if we need, the value of each unlabeled interval then by dividing that difference by the amount of intervals between them or in the case of finding a number in the midpoint simply halving that interval value and then we can add those on to the previous interval value or count on from it to give us that measurement. So let's see if we can apply this to our first think together question. So we're asked to write the mass of these vegetables in kilograms and grams so we can see the onions and we can see the group the peas. So our job here is to work out what each of these values, these intervals is worth. So we can see, for example, on our on onions that we have 0 to 1 kilogram and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we think of 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. How many times does 5 fit into 1,000? Or 1,000 shared by 5 will tell us what each interval is. Then we can think about that and count on from 3 kilograms to work out the value. When we're looking at the piece, again, we can see that we've got 0 and 1 kilogram with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 intervals. So again, move on to the grams. How many grams equals 1 kilogram? Divide that by 5 and see whether we can use that knowledge to find out what the piece weigh. So once you've completed that, carry on with those textbooks and then you're ready for the independent activity. So good luck with this. Remember the strategy we're using. I look forward to seeing your answers. And then in the next session, we'll keep on building on this understanding, this knowledge of reading different scales. So good luck with this.